Sending our kids off to school can be a bit frustrating for us parents because we feel that we have little power over what goes on while they're there. Our direct involvement comes into play when our kids get home and do their homework. Or we get the dreaded phone calls and letters from the school that they aren't. Uh, in a previous episode, I shared with parents what to do if your child springs on you an emergency late night homework assignment and, and they need some supplies. So on today's show, I'm going to provide you with four critical steps parents can take to set their kids up for success in doing their homework. The first thing we have to understand, parents, is that the homework belongs to the child, not the parent. It's a huge problem when, when parents forget that. And parents seem to own the homework too much because they love their kids, they want them to succeed, they imagine them going on to become the President of the United States and being really famous and rich and smart. But you got to remember that the homework belongs to the child, which makes it kind of frustrating. You can't reach over the child's shoulders and type the keyboard for them or grab the pencil out of their hands and do their homework. You've got to find ways to do it that influences them to want to take responsibility. So I'm going to go over four things that I think are really important for parents and caregivers of any type to help with their children on getting them to take responsibility for their homework. The first one. Number one is you've got to have the right supplies. Your child should have the right supplies to do their homework, which means it should be a formal shopping trip, in my opinion. Take the child shopping to, to whatever store where you buy supplies. And here's the difference. I think that the children should actually carry the hand basket. They should even carry the money because you want to give them ownership of being able to purchase the supplies. And so, when I even suggest that you let the child go right to the register and pay for the, for the supplies. It, it has them feel like, wow, this is me. I'm in charge, and I'm responsible for buying my supplies. So this is really key, making sure that you have the adequate supplies. Now, understand if you're shopping and the child says, well, I want this uh, $25 pen, mom. You don't have to. You are the parent, and you can say, Oh, darn, sorry, sweetie. I'm not willing to spend that much on pens. But why don't we take a look at some that don't cost quite as much? So we own that process. So let's now look at number two. Number two is to establish the location where the homework will be done. And that means working with your child to establish uh, the appropriate place where they can concentrate. Every child's different. Some children need complete quiet. Some children can do it out in the main path. It's important that we don't leave them unattended in their room with a, with, with a, you know, a computer with, so that they can concentrate. Some parents ask me, well, should we let them have their iPod or whatever? I don't know. Some kids seem to be able to study well with music. Some don't. You're just going to have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis. The thing is, if your child says, I want to do it in front of the television, you're still the parent, and you can still say, Darn, sweetie, I'm not willing for you to do it in front of the television. Where else can you do it? So you just calmly, kindly pass it back to the child until you come up with something that's, that's acceptable to you. Once you establish the space, you set it up effectively, making sure that they have adequate lighting and an appropriate desk space, a surface to work on, and all the supplies they just bought are set up there for them to, to use. Now we get to number three. Number three is the schedule. When are they going to be able to do their homework? It's really important that we stick to it as much as possible. A child needs consistency. They need to know that every day when I get home at 3.15, I can play from 3.15 to 4.30, but from 4.30 to 6 is homework time. And every child's different. I'm not going to say that you should always do it at a certain time. Some children need that release when they get home. Uh, some children don't. They want to get it done right away and get it out of the way. So you work with the child to figure out when's the best time for your child to do the homework and for how long. How long should, should the child have to work on their homework? And some children might need an hour, some might need two. The, f the point is it's important that we have our children let you know how much time they need. Now let's get to number four. This is probably one of the most trickiest parts of this process. Number four, and that's where parents truly come in and have an important role in this, and that is to control distractions. 
what I'm about to offer, a lot of parents aren't happy with, but I'm going to mention it anyway. I, it is my opinion that I think that once you establish the homework time, and let's say it's, I don't know, 3.30 to, to 5, let's just say that. That means between 3.30 and 5 becomes a no-fly zone for electronics. That means there's no iPods, there's no Nintendos, there's no internet, uh, non-academic internet, there's no television, there's no telephone, and we need to make sure that we have that established so that they know that this is, a, this is reserved, this is a sacred time, it's homework time. And the parent's job is to make sure they don't have access to those kinds of things. That means no Facebook, no cell phones, none of that kind of stuff. Now here's the tricky part. What if there's no homework? In my opinion, the no-fly zone stands every day, Monday through Thursday. And when I, when I was writing my book, I was thinking about how to approach this with, with parents because I knew some of them would take issue with this kind of thing. And so when I was writing Love Limits and Lessons, I wanted to make sure and put a message in there for parents to help them understand that what's to stop a child from coming home and going, oh, I've got no homework today, mom, because they're in the middle of a terrific Nintendo game, they saved their scores, or something big's going on and they have to check their Facebook, which you ask me, they shouldn't be on Facebook, but that's another show. And, and so we want them to understand that Monday through Thursday, that homework time, there, it's, there's no electronics, even if there's no homework. And so some kids have even said to me, oh, well, what am I supposed to do during that time? Well, as long as it doesn't involve electronics, um, we can reintroduce them to the bicycle. We can reintroduce them to writing, to reading, to doing creative things, playing with Legos, arts and crafts. I don't care what it is, but nothing electronic gets turned on. And it's a hard thing to do, and the parents must reinforce this without yelling, without screaming, without punishing, and that that becomes a reserved time. Now, notice I said not Friday because you know what? They've got the weekend to work on the homework. This is a hard lesson for, for kids to learn, but... When a parent is calm and consistent, amazing things begin to happen. I mean, I raised my own children, and I remember in each of my situations with all my kids, they would, they would storm for, for about two weeks mad about this new policy. But after a while, it dissipates. Because if the parent doesn't get angry and yell and scream, look, the, the only way you have a battle or a fight is you, mean, you need two opposing forces. Well, if the parent chooses not to be one of those opposing forces, you can't have a fight. And eventually, the child's energy about being angry kind of wears out and they adapt. Okay? So it's a, it's a hard thing, but I really encourage parents to consider uh, having that policy at home. Now that you have a plan on helping your child avoid poor grades in school, what about other factors that can influence our children? Well, coming up after the break, we're going to learn some parenting practices that will help reduce the chances our child will develop a drug or alcohol problem. Stay with us. We'll be right back after the short break. <laughs> 